Hey guys, today we are doing the field test for these Blick Illustrator markers. These are the markers that I promised to give away once I finish this field test. I have a raffle copter set up and ready to go and you can head on over to natosoup.blogspot.com for information on how you could win this 24 pack of alcohol markers. So let's go ahead and get started. The other night off camera, of course, I went ahead and did a swatch sheet on the paper that I'm going to be markering on. And I'm doing this in a Canton XL mixed media sketchbook. And the reason I went for this is that with these Blick Illustrator markers, they're aiming at a younger group of artists. I thought I would go with maybe a cheaper grade of paper. And uh, hopefully that's something that would work well together. So I, we do have sort of a limited color selection and this didn't come with a colorless blender and I've been kind of debating whether or not I wanted to use one. I am just gonna go ahead and grab my Blick Studio. This is their nicer brand, the one that I really recommend that you guys pick up if you're interested in cheap alcohol markers. Uh, I'm gonna use a Blick Studio colorless blender to do my blending. And um, you may not actually be able to find these illustrator markers anymore, and certainly not for the original price I quoted you because um, when I can find them, they're a little bit more expensive now. So that is definitely something you might wanna keep in mind, and it might be a reason to go ahead and upgrade to the Blick Studio markers. I'm gonna go ahead and start to pull out the colors that I designated for her skin. And these really remind me of the uh, new rebrand of Artist Loft markers. And actually the Artist Loft markers are now sold open stock. So I may end up picking up some piecemeal and kind of doing a, re uh, a renewed review, I guess, a revisiting. And these are compressed fiber tip markers, like I said in the swatch and unbox, which if you're interested, you can watch here. I guess it's really the unbox and swatch. So I'm using B2 and I'm going, well, for some reason, um, the ink that I used is smearing kind of badly, actually. It could be actually, this might be a dead blender. Oh, and if that's the case, I may not have a blender, period. Um, that is something to keep in mind though, that uh, as blenders start to run out of juice, they will start to smear. I'm gonna hold on to this possibly dead Lick Studio brush marker blender. You can't refill the, well, you can't officially refill these, but this is actually gonna be perfect because I can tear it apart. And I know at least one of my friends is cackling in excitement because she's always trying to get me to tear apart art supplies. And I have no problem doing so, I just don't like doing it with supplies that are still serviceable. So your day has come. It's a shame it's smeared in an area that's supposed to be white though. That's kind of annoying and frustrating. And it seems like these markers, yeah. They put down a lot and they also kind of bleed a lot. And I actually really liked the illustration I did for this piece. So I went ahead and I scanned it so as not to lose it. And we're using apple green. And then I'm going to use canary. Now something that's interesting about these markers is that silver band does not indicate the brush nib like, um, let me see. So on the Blick Studio, there is nothing to indicate the brush nib, although there's a bit of a plastic band here. And I thought, I thought on Copic markers, yeah, the brush has the gray band. So I keep grabbing the wrong end because I'm used to um, Copic sort of having a different designator. And these are already very bleedy and I don't know if that is because um, 
of the solvent used or the brush. I'm going to assume it's using the same solvent as the Blick Studio markers, but if they're having someone else manufacture these markers, then there's a very good chance that is not the case. So I'm gonna go ahead and do an undercolor of this pink, which is E15, pale pink. And then I'm gonna do the skin tone on top of this. And hopefully, since we're working with a limited number of colors, I can get a better blend on this. Now for years, I've wanted to do an essential 25. And <laughs> I've kind of back that, but I'm also still kind of working on it. So I was thinking that this set would kind of help me with that. And one of the problems with an essential 25 is what you want to render will drastically change what colors you need. And I mostly render people, so I can do an essential 25 of people colors, human colors, but I can't necessarily do an essential 25 on colors that will suit um, your needs if you're like uh, an architect, for example, or a fashion illustrator. Right, so that is pale pink. And since these bleed so much, I'm actually going to give these a chance to kind of evaporate out and the two skin tones we're going to be using are E2 and E17. And we're going to use R2 to add a little bit more blush to her skin. Okay, so since that has had a chance to dry, I'm going to go ahead and do the first layer of our skin tone. So since I only have one color I can really use, I do want to utilize, or I have two. I, I want to use utilize the white of the paper, and I also want to layer as much as possible. And I'm using, or I'm trying out a technique that my friend Kabocha taught me uh, to get kind of a watercolor effect since we're relying on the white of the paper. I don't want it to look like I just left an area uncolored. So I'm basically overworking, over flooding the paper in order to hopefully get a watercolor-esque technique. And that will make, hopefully, the white of the paper look intentional instead of uh, like I just forgot to color something or I ran out of the right color or whatever. And you guys have probably learned from my other videos that I have a tendency to put down too much color rather than too little. So that sort of discretion is sometimes a little difficult for me. So although the brush is a little bit mushy, so far it's not too bad. I hope that by the end of this field test, it's not ruined since I am sending this set on to someone else. I would hate for them to get something that they just can't use because it's just not, it's just been wrapped. Um, but you know, they would probably know in advance what condition the set they're getting comes in since I'm going to specify in the, in the uh, giveaway itself that this is a used, gently used set. I just don't have any more use for uh, additional alcohol marker sets I have and have re-gifted so many of them. I don't need any more. All right, doing the same sort of flood the paper blend technique. And then I'll show you guys, not, oh, not too, too bad, not too, too flooded on the other side. 
Uh, we lost a lot of the pink, that's okay. If you guys understand how alcohol markers work, they basically push other layers, lighter layers to the back of the paper and they sort of dilute prior layers out with their solvent or with alcohol or with blender. Okay, so this is layer two of E2. And I know she's got kind of a dazed and confused look to her face. I'm really hoping once we start doing the white highlights, that won't be such an issue. So as you guys can see, these colors do indeed layer on top of themselves so you can get a little bit more out of it. And I'm definitely trying to spare that brush nib as much as possible. Once I finish coloring in her skin, I'll show you guys what state it's in. It's not yet too bad. doing a little bit of cast shadow for the beads she's got around her neck. And I usually like to work by really saturating my paper. Um, and the reason I do that is it really helps eliminate a lot of the bleeding and the, or not the bleeding, it, elimi it eliminates a lot of streaking. Um, and you can do that with a really, really light color. You can even kind of prime the paper for, for skin bl blending. Wow, I am having the hardest time today. Um, by doing a lot of colorless blender down first. All right, so that was layer two of E2 and the paper is very damp. So I'm going to work on her eyes a little bit, starting with BG7. go in with E17 and start or maybe actually I'll go in instead with R2 blush and do just that. And then while that has kind of a chance to dry, I'll do another layer on her eyes using YG7. That was the darker color I used in the middle of her, for her um, pupils. And uh, I'm just gonna keep layering it. Zoom in so you guys can see that. All right, praline time. And I'll blend out with E2. And we're going by the Blick colors here. These are not, uh, I'm, I'm doing the Blick families. I never actually compared with my own Blick Studio brush markers to see if these were the same. I guess I should probably do that before the end of this video. I, sh if, I think two or three colors would be enough to de determine whether or not they're using the same color system. If they're using a, a different color system, it's probably because they went with a outside manufacturer 
and just use whatever system that manufacturer is using. And this is a very thirsty paper. Since it's a mixed media paper, it's designed to, throw, uh, to handle almost whatever you could throw at it, which would include watercolor. Oh, I haven't tried watercolor on this paper yet. That might happen when I go to visit Luling. I have not tried this technique with eyes yet, where I sort of overcolor them and then blend them out. So hopefully this will work. If not, I will have learned one new thing that does not work. And don't underestimate the value of learning one new thing that doesn't work. I should probably, since that violet color that I want to use for shadow is probably going to desaturate the heck out of her skin. Or maybe I shouldn't even use it at all. I've been having so much trouble where I, I think I overuse it and it doesn't work out very well. That maybe this would be a good time to skip it. Trying to get a third layer of color out of sand. Okay. I'm going to try this on the neck first. I think that actually kind of works inside of the ear. And then underneath the hair. I think maybe I should just leave it like that since I do have a tendency to overwork things and then kind of ruin them. Okay, so I kind of wanted to make her not a redhead, but a carrot top. Um, and the only reason not a redhead is because the red I have in this R11, R, right here, is way too, um, too warm and too pink. It's not cool and yellow enough for that to work and that in fact that is one of the complaints i have i'm glad they included um several skin tones that is fantastic it always makes me happy to see that um but the fact that they only have like one red is kind of like an iffy choice i'm wondering i'm wondering i feel like maybe this 24 pack was to cater to uh illustrators which is nice like because it's not just all these primary colors that are actually not very useful. There are primary colors, but it's a lot of skin tones. For 24 pack, one, two, three, four, five skin tones, six if you count a shader, uh, seven if you count a blush. That's a pretty, that's a fourth of your colors are intended for um, maybe rendering people, so that's cool. So to start her hair off, I'm going to begin with Y11 Canary.
and so far I'm able to get the sort of, sort of sharp brush stroke motion that I like for hair. I've heard uh, crafters refer to that as flicking. <laughs> it kind of drives me nuts. It's like that is not the solution to all rendering problems. And we're going to think about the direction the hair is flowing in and try to make our brush strokes match that. And we also want to leave the white uh, as our highlights. So where the hair would be closer to the light is a good place. And I think in a lot of my other marker tutorial videos, I refer to this as letting the brush do your work. And that's one of the reasons why it's important to have a brush with a good amount of flex because if your brush doesn't have enough flex then you're not going to be able to achieve you're going to you're going to be doing the work. And um, in all my years of doing marker tests and that's coming on 7 years now, um, I've tested a lot of cheap brands and the markers with like uh, bullet nibs or really mushy brush nibs like the Peter Popper markers that Barnes and Noble was selling for a while. Y you can tell that you weren't able to get the, the marker to do what you wanted it to do because the colors are more muddy. They're not as fresh. Everything looks like you just worked really hard on it. It doesn't have sort of a spontaneous effortless sort of feeling going on. I've actually gotten a lot of flack over my opinions on bullet tip markers. Personally, I do greatly prefer brush tips, I find. They are ever so much better for the sort of illustration I want to do. Um, and I've had people write in and tell me I'm not a real artist, which is so, like, okay, I mean, you can believe that if you want, but the fact that I don't like bullet tips isn't, doesn't make that so. Okay. So that is just the yellow. And I said I was going to show you guys the skin. So they start to get a little chewed up, a little beaten up, not yet frayed. They are not yet afraid. So I'm going to use my blender. And I'm not actually blending away or out the white. I'm lightening some of the transition in the yellow. So what it's doing is it's not pushing yellow into white, which is what happens when you blend water-based markers. I'm pushing the yellow back towards the back of the paper so that it appears like there's a transitional color. Oh, let me zoom out actually so you guys can see. And then before we get too far into that, I'm going to use, mm -hmm. see, B1 and B2 are actually somewhat dissimilar. So I'm gonna use B2 and BG14. Those are a little more similar to start sort of hashing in a bit of a background. And she's really got some fierce de deer in the headlights going on today. My deer in the headlights. And then I'll blend that out a bit with my colorless blender, which actually looks like it might have put down some yellow, but hopefully that will dry clear. doing this sort of gives the implication that there's a blue sky behind her without having to color the whole thing which might come across as kind of heavy, heavy handed or maybe even a little amateur. It also saves on ink and saves me time. So that 
is always a good thing and it's a little trick you guys might want to give a try. And if you like this line art and you want to try this along at home, I actually have it available for free for my patrons at patreon.com slash soup, but you can also pick it up on Gumroad. I'm going to blend this area out a lot because I kind of want to hash in her dress also. So push that out. And then I'm going to start with E15, pale pink. And I'm going to blend out those edges as well so it's more of a hint than a sketch. And I'm also going to go over this, so I'm not super concerned about streaking. So I am really trying to saturate the paper here with colorless blender. I want to put it, push it back as far as possible. If I was working with a larger set of colors, I would have used a very, very, very pale pink to begin with. And that would have made what I'm doing here easier. Just checking the back to see <laughs> whether or not I can tell what areas I, I push back. Then I'm going to go ahead and do another layer of B2. And I probably would have had better results if I had done wet and wet, but I wanted to get some softing, softer blends from her dress to the sky. Actually, that's not so bad. And then I'm going to grab BG14 Mint. I'll zoom out a little bit and blend that out with B2. Then I'm going to go back in with E15 Pale Pink and do another layer on her dress. And very Dolly Parton with how I wasn't able to blend all that out. So I will just keep going. Maybe even give it a spritz of rubbing alcohol, push those colors back. So I'm going to mask it. I actually want to mask it further down too. And this is 90% rubbing alcohol and it might mess up cleavage down there, but hopefully it'll push some of those colors back a little bit better. Okay, so next Lily is the next layer on her hair, which is orange. Uh, YR13, so really pumpkin to be exact. Actually, no, the next color would be Y10 Marigold. I don't know why I grabbed orange. I'm gonna go ahead and thankfully that was in the, sort of in the background. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and do all of that in orange and then do Marigold on top of it. And hopefully that kind of makes it look less like I made a mistake and more like I did it intentionally. I know in other videos I've certainly talked to you guys about how a big part, at least a big part of my artistic life, is taking accidents and turning them into on purposes. 
and that really mutes the heck out of pumpkin, which was the orange we used. But in a way, that's good because it takes it out of the realm of cartoonishly orange and into the realm of feasibly orange, which was kind of my main concern with that orange to begin with. It says pumpkin, but it was like screaming orange. I don't know, I tend to think, maybe it's foolish on my part, I tend to think of pumpkin as a little bit darker and a little more muted. In fact, I like how it muted, mutes the orange enough that I want to use it on the rest of her hair as well. And before you guys start commenting with happy accident, um, I think Bob Ross was a good enough artist that he could salvage mistakes and always consider them happy accidents. But for me, it's still very much... <laughs> a coin toss as to whether or not it's going to be terrible and I ruined it or I was able to make gold out of out of hay and I seem to have really cut the yellow on this so I don't want to lose the yellow and I can always go in with um, like Copic Opaque White or PH Martin's Bleed Proof White or even a white Signo and add the white back in. And you guys will notice that for this I've been working kind of carefully in sections. That's because I want to be able to maintain control as much as possible. And these definitely do not feel like sponge rubber, like super tips, like Copic tips. Um, they definitely feel a little mushier, a little more sluggish, but it's not, I mean, I'm gonna use a, I guess I'll use a card analogy. Like, okay, so these are definitely a Kia Optima, but they're still a car. And when you're 16 and all your friends are talking about getting cars, you don't think you're gonna get a Ferrari necessarily. Now, unfortunately, um, a lot of younger artists do think they're gonna get a Ferrari. They think they're gonna get Copics right off the bat because that's what professional artists are using. And that's what they're being told by their peers that they have to have. And, um, I mean, Copics are definitely nice, but you can get that foam rubber tip on other markers as well and not pay Copic price, especially, um, if you know where to shop for Copics, they're a little bit easy, like a little easier on the budget. And I mean, if you're on Dick Blick to get Dick Blick markers, then you're paying one of the better price. You would be paying one of the better prices for Copic markers. Um, but there are other very affordable alcohol markers. That have the right tip. Actually, let me finish doing this and I'll get back to that topic. There are other good markers with that foam rubber super brush tip that I love so much. And they're much less expensive. I mean, um, usually when people are talking about Copics, they really mean Copic sketch markers, but Copic chow markers made by Copic, refillable, smaller color selection, but not 
like drastically smaller. I mean, it's drastically smaller, but you still get like 94 colors. There's still a lot of colors in available in Copic Chow. And you can always, as you grow your collection, you can always buy sketches in the color that you're missing. And I would have had a collection of Chows, but Chows didn't come out until I'd already <laughs> invested in a bunch of Copic sketches. You can also do Prismacolor markers. Those are great. Um, they're not refillable. They do have a foam rubber tip. And you can do the Blick Studio brush markers like I showed you earlier in this video. Um, and those are also not refillable, but they handle really well. They're very inexpensive. Um, so those would usually be what I would recommend if you were buying for someone who has never used alcohol markers but really wants alcohol markers or somebody who um, is younger maybe. I mean all of these do have a fume and some people are very very sensitive to the alcohol fumes and so they can't use these. They have to use water-based markers and I have loads of great recommendations for water-based markers as well and one of the upsides to water-based markers is they tend to be a lot cheaper. So normally, if I had gone this route with shading her hair, I would have used a very red brown to do the, um, to do like the low lights. I'm going to use another pass of pumpkin, but I'm gonna give this a chance to dry first. And I'm gonna go in with R2. And work a little bit on her dress. And I'm gonna blend out, where is it, with E. 15. Now, as I'm using these markers, definitely think there are some, if Blick decides to continue to do them, I can't see them growing the line or adding more colors because they have their studio brush markers, which are better um, and almost the same price. That's why I was kind of surprised when they released these. Um, but I could definitely see these being great for someone who's a crafter, right? And um, they only want to do limited color. They don't really want a lot of color and they really don't need all the all the upkeep of say Copic markers. Not that Copic markers are impossible, but you know, they are a little bit higher maintenance because they're not disposable. So you do want to take care of them. I mean, these come in a 20, they're either in 12 or 24 packs and they come with their own case, very compact, very portable. Um, I could see if you wanted to try doing con commissions in marker, for example, bringing this pack because even at, even if you're paying a dollar a marker, $24, if somebody stole it, I mean, that would suck, but it's not <laughs> going to break your bank. I could also see these being good if you teach, um, like young people marker classes, right? So like if I were doing marker classes for the National Public Library, I might pick up, well, I might put in a, re a requisition because I'm done buying supplies for that. That does not ever end well for me. Um, I might put in like a requisition for three packs of these. And I think, yeah. So you can tell it's still a very juicy marker. In fact, it's kind of leaked all over itself. Not too badly, not enough that it's like going to get on my hands or ruin the piece. Um, but you can also maybe tell that the brush is starting to lose some of its snap. And this would be one of those instances where having maybe a bullet point would be good because I'm a little concerned about doing her eyebrows properly. And I'm also kind of just allowing my the marker nib to kind of skate over or dance over the paper. Darkening the area behind her face. Trying to give it a little more volume. And now I really want to do, um, I really wish I had a good brown or a good red to do the darkest low lights in her hair. I think I'm going to try E6, which is hazelnut, 
to do the area away from her face. And I think I think this might work for what I'm looking for. Something nice about a small pack like this is it also forces me to be creative with my color choices. I get not necessarily creative is not really the word. Um, more adventurous, I guess, except it's still a pretty tame type of adventurous, just less reliant on color families and more reliant on using color scents. So, um, in that regard, a small set of 24 is a good idea for someone who would like to, um, pursue maybe illustration or art because it's going to, uh, force you to become more familiar with color theory. This is sort of like what I was saying with the, um, the Daniel Smith Essential 6 mixing set, I believe, is that when you have like a very limited number of colors, but they all work well together, you will learn how to mix what you need. And then you, you're not reliant on always having a million colors accessible to you. You can make do with what you have. So, but that you don't have to get this 24 pack to get that. You can get the Blick Studio brush markers, the ones that I really recommend. And I'm not paid to talk about them. I'm under no contract with Blick whatsoever. I just really think they're great. And I really think they're a great option for younger artists or artists who have never used markers before and are interested but don't want to sink a lot of money or artists who um, want to add colors to their Copic collection that aren't available or artists. So basically, I think they're great. <laughs> All right, I'm also gonna grab Sangria, which is a very dark, like a garnet red. Let's see how that goes, because I might have to blend that out, because it's more saturated than that brown I just put down. but I didn't like how much that brown really desaturated everything. And then I'm also going to put a little bit of this brown in where I did her eyelashes. That way they're kind of the same color as her skin. I know you guys can't see that. And now, I have, I'm almost done, getting there, getting there. I'm going to do the center of these petals. So I am doing a little bit of B1 pastel blue. And I need to be careful because I have all this hair around. I'm going to then use the colorless blender and soften that color a li little bit. And some of these colors are more reactive than others. This light blue is actually fairly reactive. Give that a chance to dry. I'll move over to the hydrangea, which I'm gonna do in purple, pink, and blue. I wanna zoom out to show you guys. And I'm going to start by saturating each one with E15. So with pink. And then I'm going to, nope, keep grabbing the wrong end. And I'm just working one flower kind of one flower at a time. I am going back and tightening things on the flower previous when necessary, but mostly just working one flower at a time. That way I can get wet into wet blending with markers. In 
terms of color, I am finding this set to be a very serviceable set. Or at least so far. To give a definitive, I would have to work with it for a, a fairly extended period of time, which I'm not prepared to devote. And if you're looking for alcohol marker, all, any kind of recommendations from color recommendations to brand recommendations to accessory recommendations, I have two gift guides um, and I will link the beginner gift guide right here. And that includes a lot of color recommendations for uh, both Copic and Prismacolor, or Copic Prismacolor and Blick Studio Sketch. And I will link the advanced here. And that's that definitely builds on the beginner. And I start talking about alcohol inks in that gift guide. So. I recommend you guys check those out. I think you'll be surprised. There's a lot in there that people don't necessarily think about. Then I'm going to use, hmm, and I think I'm actually going to use violet B12 and just doing three little dots I'm doing teeny tiny flowers let me zoom in so you guys can see that and then I'll do some that don't have a leaf attached And then I'm gonna go back in to the hydrangea with blue. And tighten up that blue a little bit and then grab the purple. And then we have these beads around her neck. And I'm kind of concerned about how I'm gonna handle those because the brush tips on all these markers are fairly big and I just don't have faith that I can get something as teeny tiny as those beads done without it looking like trash. But I guess I should jump in and do it. And I'm using a color that if it ends up on the skin, it's just gonna make it look like it's casting a shadow. I'm using V2. Yeah, I'm going, going for like a pearl look, I guess. So I'm just going to sort of do the ones that are in shadow and leave some of them white. And then go up into the hydrangea again and using YG7, dot those centers. And then let's see if I have a decent white pen. I might not. It looks like a donut. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go get a cup of water and a very fine brush and do some white highlights using Dr. P.H. Martin's Bleed Proof White. All right, so we've got our PH Martins bleed proof white and a very, very fine brush. This is a one, a one round. Her freckles. So I'm going to try to be very careful and use hazelnut to do that. So despite being careful 
they still kind of blobbed out and it's that type of brush. Now with a good foam rubber bl brush like a Prismacolor or a Blick Studio brush or a Copic of any type, well, of the Sketch and Chow varieties really, um, I can get really, really, really fine details without without it blobbing out like that. So that foam, that uh, compressed fiber nib is just really not comparable, in my opinion, to, no, I'll just say it, it's not comparable to um, the super brush, the, the uh, foam rubber nibs. So I wouldn't recommend getting this set if that's kind of what you're looking for. If you've heard about those kind of nibs and you, you want to give it a try, this isn't it. Blake Studio Brush, that's the way to go. I'll drop a link in the description to ideally to both. Um, when I was doing the field test, I realized that Blick no longer offers the, or didn't, wasn't offering. I think they were repricing the 24 pack. So honestly, by the time you guys see this, this might be a moot point anyway, because they may not have even intended to offer this set for like longer than a week. It'll have been a month by the time this is all said and done. But I got that, um, I got my, what's it called? My field. No, my swatch and unbox up as soon as I possibly could. And it still wasn't soon enough, so. Fair warning, if you see, see the set on my channel and you're like, I just have to have it, or, I, or you're like me and you're stubborn, and you're like, I'm gonna review that set. I bet I have a different opinion. Which is fine, it's legit, I'm I'm totally that person, so I'm making fun of myself more than anybody else. I'll see things on other people's channels and I'll be like, hmm, that's not how I would have handled it. Let me see if it would work with the way I like to handle it. And then half the time it's like, no, they were right. I'm a fool. How dare I think I'm gonna be so different. The true hubris is when you think you're going to be so different from everyone else. 30 people might say no, but I say yes. And then I guess true genius or maybe just stubborn dumb luck is when, when you do manage to do it despite everyone else having had bad experiences. How much do you guys want to bet? I'm going to overwork this and ruin what went from being a pretty decent, although for some reason my, um, I'm getting a resist effect with, and I don't know if it's from the marker or if it's from what I use to ink this. And I use the burr, 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 Sakura of America Pigma FB to ink this. It is Copic marker proof, it is waterproof. And the little bit of smearing we got earlier in the video is because my, Blick Studio brush marker was dying. Blend that out just a little bit, soften that transition. All right, you guys, we are done. Um, my thoughts on these Blick Illustrator markers, I say skip them and get the Blick Studio markers. They're gonna last you longer. They're nicer, they have a nicer tip to them. I said that I would try to compare the colors to see if they're using the same color family. So let's see what I've got. I know sand is one of the colors, right? E2 is sand. I thought I had sand. I bet I brought, I packed sand to go to Louisiana with me. I'll grab it real quick from there. And I'll zoom out so you guys can see what I'm doing. Let's see, we have camel, sand. All right, straight off the bat, nope. Look, two totally different 
ladder numbering systems if it will ever focus. The illustrator marker is E2. The studio brush marker is 078. In fact, yeah, so we got a Y11. I think all the Blicks have a totally numerical system, usually beginning with a zero. I'll grab something weird and that'll be kind of our, our true test. So they don't even have the same coloring system. All right, I grabbed 069, which is antique, and then 003, which is, what are you? Light peach, yeah, I think almost all of them begin with a zero. Do I have any? Yeah, I have something really dark and weird. Yeah, 074 is ink blue. It's a very, very dark blue. It still begins with a zero. So. For the Blick Studio Brush markers, they all have a zero and it's all entirely numerical. There's not, it's not like the Copic system where you have like um, a representative letter like Y or R or E. Whereas with the Illustrator markers, they do have, and I have a style file marker here, which is very, very similar. This was sent to me by Kabocha. Thank you so much. Um, they're much bigger, but it's pretty much the same design if you guys can't tell and these have in fact this naming system is almost identical too we have a bg7 mantis green and then cg7 cool gray seven and um these sort of marker bodies are not uncommon on like aliexpress um a lot of the markers there utilize that and i think the artist lofts the new artist loft have the same body so i'm gonna have to pick up the new artist loft at least a couple of them since they're sold open stock and i don't have to buy an entire package of them and um we'll see what we get so check out natosoup.blogspot.com for a chance to win this set of blick illustrator markers and uh, while you're there you might as well check out my many, 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 many other alcohol marker reviews. Maybe you'll find something you like even better or something that suits your needs even more than these do. If I were a parent, and I am not, so take that as a caveat, I wouldn't buy my kids alcohol markers until they were at least 12. The reason for that is, like I said, they do have fumes. Some are less fumey than others, but some of them can be really intense. And I know adult artists who can't use alcohol markers because it's too strong for them so i would just be concerned about you know brain development being hindered by huffing accidentally huffing too many alcohol markers but i know there are so many very talented very artsy kids out there and it would be very hard to deny a child with true promise um the the tools that they're that the people they look up to use so I say this, but you know, not being a parent, we really don't know what I would do. I'd probably turn around and buy them for all I say I wouldn't. Um, but I've gotten alcohol marker migraines from other brands. So I don't know that I would really want my kids using them. There are plenty of water-based markers that are not going to have those fumes. That would be ideal for your kiddo. And um, I think I have um, a video, I can link it right here or link it in the description below if I've run out of cards, where I talk about good brands of water-based markers for illustration. And if not, I can make a video on that topic. Um, if you are a crafter and you want a few alcohol markers and you really don't want to commit to the whole thing, then I recommend this is fine. Um, there's a good selection of colors. There's a lot of skin tones. A fourth of this box is skin tones. I think you can manage through layering and judicious use of your markers. I think you can manage to go from very fair Caucasians to fairly dark skinned people. So um, there is some variety in that. And um, sorry, I lost my train of thought. So yes, for crafters who don't want a lot of alcohol markers, who aren't gonna use alcohol markers all that often, but they do want some around that they can use if they're feeling that mood, these would be good for that. Very compact set, colors are fairly well chosen. If you're buying these for a young artsy kid, I would either say skip the alcohol markers, go with water-based until they're old enough. 
Um, and if they're insistent, I would say get the Blick Studio brush markers because those are so much better and they're not necessarily fumier. These don't use the same color system as the Blicks and they don't have the same brush tips as the Blicks. So I think these were made by another company, repackaged and sold by Blick. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but if you like the Brick, Blick, the Brick Studio, the Blick Studio brush markers, um, just get those, don't get these. And I've seen other artists recommending these without having reviewed them or own any. So mm, they're not the same guys. And not all cheap alcohol markers are good alcohol markers as you guys who frequent my channel know. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'm sorry I got a little wordy on you guys. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. She's still very dear in the headlights, doe-eyed, but it is what it is. I'll see you guys later. Bye guys.